So here I am going to show you uh, the latest creation to come out of Grin Technologies. This is a project that's been a little passion of mine for quite a few years, and that's to make the ultimate commuter unicycle. Uh, so what you see here looks like an interesting unicycle, uh, but there's more going on than necessarily meets the eye. If you have a close look at the stem, valve stem, and the unicycle frame, you'll see that if I turn the cranks one turn, the wheel itself does one, one and a half, and actually 1.7 rotations. So inside this hub, I've got a 1.7 to 1 gear reduction ratio to effectively double the speed that I'm able to travel at with the given, given pedal RPM. Um, the hub itself is large in diameter because it's motorized. So this is an electric direct drive hub motor. It's uh, based on the prototype of the Grin through axle uh, direct drive motor where we've redone the axle itself so that it could have a hollow crank going through it along with the planetary gear set. Another thing you can't see from the outside that really makes this unique is that the uh, transmission from the pedals to the hub has a strength sensor on it so it's able to measure accurately the pedal torque that I'm applying as a unicyclist. Now one of the complications with the geared unicycle is that you need the gearing to achieve a high speed uh, but the gearing also reduces the leverage that you have on the unicycle wheel. So on a unicycle, if you're starting to fall, you need to pedal harder to bring the wheel back under you. If you're falling backwards, you need to apply braking force. And when the unicycle's geared, you need a much stronger effort on the leg to achieve the same equilibrium, and it's harder to stay balanced. Uh, with the torque sensor in the hub, my electronics is able to measure that and then drive the motor in reaction to my own pedal forces. So it's amplifying my pedal force and amplifying all the corrective actions that I do in order to stay balanced. And that makes this electric unicycle a lot easier to ride in spite of the gearing than a correspondingly geared non-electric unicycle. Uh, I'm able to do that largely because of the phase runner motor controller. So this is a motor controller that's been uh, quite a few years in the making and the purpose of this controller was to fulfill the ability to do interesting and oddball projects and uh, it gives a very direct regulation um, of the motor torque itself. So I'm able to ask the motor to do 20 newton meters and instantly this will do. Um, the actual brains of the unicycle is in the cycle analyst. So this is a familiar display for, um, for electric bicycles, only we've made a, a custom unicycle version here. In this here I've got two input modes. I've got a potentiometer and what this does is adjust how much I'm amplifying my pedal torque. So if I turn it all the way down then the motor doesn't amplify my pedal torque at all. Um, if I crank it all the way up, then here every, for every newton meter of pedal torque, there's uh, 20 millivolts of signal going into the motor controller. Um, so what's interesting, if you crank this up all the way, then it kind of over, overreacts to my pedaling. So once I pedal, the unicycle shoots too far forwards. And I find a sweet spot's had at about 10. And at this value, uh, it's able to amplify my corrective forces without leading me into an oscillation. Uh, the up-down buttons also control the motor, but they do it in a way totally independent of my pedal effort. This just produces a steady force on the wheel. So as I'm going uphill, I just tap the up button a couple times and I'm able to just have a net torque that levels out the hill. And then going downhill, I push the down button and then you can't feel it, but now there's a steady braking force uh, resisting. What's great about this control input is that I can set the, the uh, amount of assistance I want while I'm riding and then just ignore it. And I can keep my hands free to signal, to carry things, uh, or to maintain my balance if I hit a bump or something. And the unicycle will keep out where it's at. And whenever I want to adjust it, I just reach and either push the button or turn the knob a little bit, depending on what control input I want to change. Um, so the last thing that makes this unicycle pretty great, uh, I'm going to be taking this to Unicon in Spain in a day. And traveling with electric vehicles is always quite a challenge. Um, and in this little bag on the back here, I have three battery packs. Each one of these is less than 100 watt hours, so I'm able to separate them into sub 100 watt hour packs, bring them on the plane with me, and then reconnect them at my destination. Altogether, that gives me just under 300 watt hours of battery. On an e-bike, that's not a huge amount of battery. That would usually get you about 30 kilometers. On a unicycle, you're going a little bit slower, um, and you're pedaling all the time, so you're kind of forced to be more efficient with the battery usage. If you come over and look at the display here, um, you can see that for my last 123 watt hours, I've been going, consuming 4.3 watt hours per kilometer. So that would mean that 300 watt hours of uh, battery capacity, 300 divided by 4.3 is going to be roughly uh, 70, 75 kilometers of range just with those three little batteries inside there. Um, and I just mentioned speed, so one of the goals for me has always been to make a commuter unicycle, something that's as fast as riding a bicycle but has the uh, portability advantages and general novelty that a unicycle provides. Uh, so with this 1.7 to 1 gear ratio, I'm able to 
maintain a steady sort of 25 to 30 kilometer an hour as a comfort zone speed. Uh, my top speed uh, will be greatly helped if I go to shorter cranks, which I'll do as I gain confidence in this. Um, but uh, for the most part, it's able to cruise just under the sort of the 32 kilometer an hour uh, e-bike limit in Canada. So one little trick about this is unlike the uh, schlumpf geared unicycle hubs, you have to mount it in geared mode. So it's a bit of forward motion, and off you go. So on that last little bit, we uh, cruised down the road and I got a max speed of 35 kilometers an hour. Um, this average includes a bunch of previous travels, so don't factor that too much into the equation. But I want to see now if I, uh, if I can hit 40 kilometers an hour is my real goal here. So I'm going to swap out the uh, cranks for some shorter 125 millimeter cranks and see if we can't uh, hit 40 clicks on this little stretch, Aaron. Now we've got the shorter cranks on here. I have no idea if I'll be able to free mountain ride this thing or if I'll need a helping shoulder, but here we go. Whoa! Oh yeah! He's done it! try that again now that I've raised my seat up so that my legs are full extension and this time it's a little bit of a slight uphill uh, but that shouldn't bother us at all because I'll just hit the uh, bias adjustment to compensate and make it feel like it's all downhill. Will you use, yeah. So, yeah, I think we'll leave it at that for today's experiment. Are you sure? I think I'm going to leave record breaking in the hands of professional unicyclists. Stick to my amateur hacking and uh, okay. my speed sane for now. Anyways, that was a good run. Hoping some people at Unicon can actually take this up to the 40, 45 kilometer an hour barrier. And thanks for watching this little video. Woo!